Hello, everyone, in the EDAP 690 class, the class that Mayer built. We are at the end of our modules. And I'm going to show you our last module for the class is the Google Tour Builder. This is a very straightforward, very simple tool to use. I won't spend a lot of time going through it because you won't have any trouble. There are a couple things you need to understand about the global tour, Google Tour Builder. This link will take you there. And inside the folder here, there are videos, there's a PDF. You want to, you know, print it out and have it in your hands. But I'm telling you, this is about as simple as it gets. But what you have to do ahead of time is you have to understand this is your way of telling a story about a journey. Now, that journey can be as simple as you're growing up, vacations you've always wanted to take, your journey, you went on a trip to Europe, anything that involves the Google Earth, because that's what you're using here, you can use. Probably one of the best things I ever did with this particular tool was with a group of ESL kids who told us their story, their journey from their native countries to coming to America. I'm not going to do anything that dramatic in my little example here tonight, but I'm going to give you a sense of what you can do. So this is how it starts. Here's a video here. If you want to see how it, it works, you won't have any trouble. Trust me. One of the things that you need to do is you need to kind of get your stuff together. So you can blend in this thing videos, photographs, and Google Earth. So you have to have, you can find videos. You can do the classic Google video YouTube search. But if you're going to use pictures of yourself, you need to get all that kind of together so that you can put it into play. So I'm going to click here where it says create the tour. And I'm going to call mine, my journey of new understandings. And I'm going to say my name, obviously. Simple, simple. Create the tour. Now, the tour basically treats everything you do um, kind of like a, a PowerPoint. Each location represents a different slide. Uh, in the assignment, it says at least from 6 to 12 slides long. So go from there. I'm going to go ahead and add a photo in mine. And let's see. I'm going to upload the photo from my downloads here because that's where I put it. There he is. So I'm going to open that. And as you can see, it kind of sets the stage. Then down here in the introduction, it says, so what's a good summary of your tour? When I was 21, I left home on my own to work in northern Minnesota, not Minnesota, <laughs> Minnesota, at a boys camp there. I would have never guessed what I was in store to experience. Okay. You know, a Minnesota mistake. Get the idea. So I'm kind of setting you up. Now I'm going to add a new location. And I'm going to type in the location where I grew up. You'll see why. And it, of course, finds it. And I'm going to add that to the tour. 
Now notice when I do that, it gives me the same box and I can come down here and type in. I never traveled much as a kid growing up. We didn't have much money. So when I got a chance to work for a boys camp in Minnesota, I jumped. Okay. I'm now going to add a new location. And there we are. So I'm going to add that to my tour. And I could go on from here. I can keep going. Um, you know, I might want to go out and see if I can find some pictures that I might throw in here. Up. And these are all very familiar to me. Look, there's there's a Thunderbird. Oh, here we go. This is a good one. Let me just throw a couple pictures in here. And we'll just call it T-Bird. And we'll call another one. You get the idea. So I'm basically just going to pull some pictures in, help bring out the story a little bit more, because I can, as you can see right here. So I can go in here and I can find the photos that I want to upload. Well, interesting. Okay. We'll try that again. Let's see. It might have kicked it out because it was too small.
I'm not really sure why it's giving me trouble here. It's pretty straightforward. But I, if I had to guess, that's what I would say is the problem. Server rejected. Okay, fine. But you get the idea. I can go to another location. In other words, I could, I could have done an explanation with some pictures there. I'm going to add that to the tour. And then I could go in here and I could find some more pictures from the White Earth Reservation. <coughs> it was when I enjoyed working, swimming, hiking and canoeing with my boys. But it wasn't until I became a program director that my eyes were really open to a new world. On the Red Lake and White Earth Reservations. So I'm going to add that location and then I'll go ahead and I'll put in the Red Lake one. Big reservation, by the way. That's why it has multiple locations there. You can see, just from looking at this, they're all pretty close, clustered around to where I was. I'm going to add that to the tour. And then I'll go on to explain how, as a program director, it was my job to go out and explore where kids could go uh, as a part of their being here at this camp. I was all of 22 years old, trying to find locations. Knowing what I'd known, the only thing I had going for me was I was an Eagle Scout. So I kind of knew my way around the out of doors. But what I didn't realize, and this is the point of what my tour would be about, is my boss, who owned the place, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> was way ahead of his time. And at that time in Minnesota, the American Indian movement was underway. And he wanted the kids who came to his camp, who came from very wealthy backgrounds, to understand the plight of the Native American in this country. And so part of my job, visit with Red Lake and White Earth, to set up a time and a place where I could bring kids in. The interesting thing about it was we were met with a great deal of anger and rejection. And I'll never forget the day I came back, especially from the Red Lake. And I was really worried. I said to my boss, I said, we can't go up there. There are very angry people there, and they might hurt us. And he said, so why are they angry? This guy was an amazing man. He said, go back and sit down with them again and try to help them understand that you don't you don't want to come there because you want to uh, – a, a, sightseeing tour. You don't want to come there as tourists. You want to come there to understand the culture of the Native American in northern Minnesota. 
I did. And I don't know if it was because I was young. I don't know if it was because I was sincere. I don't know what it was. But a door opened. And I then was able to bring kids onto the reservation, have them visit and tour all the facilities there. These places have schools in them, by the way. So they can see what their school looked like compared to a school on the reservation. It opened my eyes. I started life growing up in this little place in Louisville, Kentucky, in this little neighborhood across the street from Hawthorne Elementary School. And all of a sudden, I'm standing in one of the most beautiful places, humble opinion, on earth. And that is the white earth and especially the Red Lake reservations. Okay. So that would be my tour. Now, can I add anything else to these things? Well, let's go look and see. So I can go up here and add. And I can come down here to YouTube. And I can search for YouTube. I hit the wrong thing. Search for YouTube. And I could put in Red Lake Reservation. <clears throat> and what I could do is I could show the things that I had experienced because I'm going to have to look at these videos, obviously. I'm not going to throw anything in here. I'm going to select that one. And I will put that into, oh, you know what, I'm going to pick this one. It's new. And I'm going to put that in. There you go. So I can talk about what I experienced visiting there here. And I can put in videos. And if I have pictures, I can do that too. It's that easy, guys. But because it's that easy, it becomes a powerful, powerful, powerful tour, tool um, so that when you start it, you can play it in full screen, go back to the beginning, okay? And it's just clicking through the slides. Now, when you're finished, what you're going to do is just as simple. You come up here to where it says share, and you grab this. That's all. And then you're going to copy that link. You probably better make it so everybody can see it. Sorry about that. Anyone who has the link can see it. So there we go. So I'm going to copy my link. And then I'm going to go into our good old friend, the PB Works. Log in. By now, you should be nodding off going, yes, Steve, yes, Steve, we know how to do this. I'm going to create a new page. Module 6, Google Tour. Create the page. Come in. And I ask you in the... Uh, module here to just put a paragraph in here about what your tour is about. And as you know, I can just drop it straight in. I can insert it as a link or I can add a link. Let's just insert it as a link to make sure it comes in nice and clean. And once I do that, when I save everything, It'll have it there. Now, 
if I didn't want to do it that way, I could just drop it in. Save. And now I have a tour link that'll take me out to, there you go. Easy, easy. Now, the thing that makes it so much fun is wherever these pins are, you click on them and they'll take you down to the location, which is kind of fun. So if you wanted to go to the next slide, which is right here, and I can click on that pin and I can zoom in and walk around in the Camp Thunderbird for Boys, where I used to work. And as you can see, it was on a beautiful lake called Plantagenet. And it had a girls' camp around the bend from the camp. You were considered quite the, the stud if you could swim from here to there, to the girls' camp. <laughs> it was only a mile. I swim a mile whenever I get in the pool here at UofL. But then this is also really where it gets interesting, is if you click on the White Earth Reservation here, and you zoom in to it, what really makes this interesting is you start to realize, first of all, where it is. There we go. How isolated it is from everything else around it. And you can move your mouse around and look for buildings and you won't see very many. I go to the Red Lake, do the same thing, zoom in on it. What I'll get is a beginning of an understanding of what it must be like to live on a reservation. I hope you'll give this a little more thought than I did, just running through it real fast here. Because I think this is a very powerful tool um, that you can use with kids. And the fact it's Google, so therefore it's very easy to put it into the Google Classroom. Now let's go back and let's look at our final. So what you're doing on your final is you're going to pick a piece of multimedia. It can be anything and everything. It doesn't have to be something you create. This can be the PowerPoints that you are asked to use in your classroom. It could be a brain pop video that you use in your elementary classroom. It could be a YouTube video that you're asked to use in your classroom. Anything, going back to Mayer's description, that has pictures and words, pictures and sounds, pictures and narration, you can use. I've already created for you how to put it together. So all you have to do is highlight all of this table right here, copy it, go to your PB Works, go to your PB Works and create a new page. Call this new page EDAP690HATHAP. Create the page. Open it. Make sure you're in edit mode and paste. Now that can be a control V, can be an Apple V. You could even do a right click on your mouse and paste. It'll put the table in here. Once you have the table in here, what you're going to do is you're going to put in here either the link 
the file, in other words, if it's a PowerPoint, you're going to put that into this box right here. So let's say that I used um, a video from YouTube all the time. And I use it for teaching fractions. Okay. And so I'm going to pick the one or I'm going to pick the one that I use. Pick something you use, okay? So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick multiplying fractions. Still searching YouTube for math help, but the video is from 2006 really helping. Aren't you tired of finding videos that aren't getting? Skip the ad. <laughs> Copy it. You probably noticed that we've been talking an awful lot about. Okay, I'm going to go back over into here. You know the drill. I can either paste in, put the link in like that. If I want to show off, I can go in and do an insert. Actually, do an insert of a video, YouTube. Sorry about that. And I can paste that in. I can go next, and I can insert the plug-in, and now I have the video right here. And it'll be there when I save it. You know that. You're going to, over here, you're going to go through and you're going to say where and how in your presentation this principle is included or not included. So as you see down here, it says coherence principle. People learn better when extraneous words, pictures, and sounds are excluded rather than included. In this box over here, you're going to tell me all through the video distractions are kept at a minimum. Signaling. You're going to tell me where you see the signaling. If it's not there, say so. Material, the video, does not follow Mayer's principles of signaling. Okay. Let's go back and do another one. So this time I'm going to pull in a um, file that I want to use. And you remember how to do that. So I have to go over here to Images and Files. I'm going to upload a file. And I may have just got myself in trouble because I'm not sure if I've got a... Yeah, I do. So I've got a PowerPoint right here. And I'm going to upload that. And I'm going to make sure where it's going to land, right over there. So there's my PowerPoint. And then I can look at it. It doesn't have to be that, you know, I, you, I don't need you to bring it in like in a slide share or something like that. Just the link to the, that thing, that file that you use in your classroom that is a multimedia-based file that you teach with. Um, I'm not sure. Those of you who use BrainPop, I don't think I can get anything out of BrainPop uh, because I don't have an account. But if you do have an account, I can do start for free. Okay, we'll stop there. Let's go down here and see if we can find one real fast. I'll go ahead and I'll do that one. And I'll do that one. Excuse me. And you get the idea. And so what I can do is if this is the thing that I use, and there's the little video right there. If you've never used BrainPop before, okay, so yeah, I can't get into it anymore. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to just copy this. 
because this will take me to the brain pop video. Um, I don't need to be able to watch the video. I just need to see your um, looking at it through the lens of Mayer. Okay. That's your final. You're going to copy the table that is here, right here in the module, the, the hat module. Make sure you get all the little boxes highlighted. Then you put it into your PB Works. Then you're going to either put in a link to a YouTube video. If you want to show off, you can put in the YouTube video because you know how to do that now. You can put a link to a PowerPoint. You can put a link to something else that you teach with. I use the example of Brain Pop. Anything, any website, any web quest, anything like that that you use is fair game. Just make sure that you put it up here so that I can then either go see it or understand what it is that you're using. And then I'll look down here for your determination. Now, what if you get a multimedia artifact that doesn't follow any of Mayer's principles? Well, that's going to be kind of hard to find, to be quite frank with you. But if you do, you do. Boy, don't teach with it, whatever you do, because now you know better. Because Rich has told you especially things like coherence principle, modality principle, you know, that two channels where we get information from our eyes and our ears. And if we mess around with that input to where our brain has a, is, has a struggle to organize it into short-term memory, because short-term memory is short, it will then not get passed into long-term memory where we then can build upon it to make new connections to new ideas. Pretty straightforward, huh? And that's it. Uh, next week is the University of Louisville spring break. I hope you, if you're a student here, I hope you get to take a little time off. If not, you don't have to worry about coming here um, for class. We are done. If you have questions, if you need to get with me, I'll be meeting with a student uh, this Friday using the same setup as we have here for our class, which is we'll be meeting together within this Collab Ultra framework where we can talk to each other and they can show me stuff or they can ask questions about stuff. Any of this we can do to help you get finished. To set that up, all you have to do is drop me a text at 502 457 Two nine three seven. I'm always here for you. Have a good week.